if you would have told me 30 years ago I would have packed up my life and moved to Australia for a girl, I would have thought you were off your trolley. Uh, I wouldn't have believed you at all. It was my second year of teacher's college and I decided I would go to visit all my relatives in England because my dad used to write to everyone and I'd started writing to my cousin who was the same age as me and I thought oh, it would be good to go. So I was 20 years old, got on the first big plane I've ever been on and went all the way to England for two months to stay with relatives who I'd never met. When I met your mum I was 25 and I met her on New Year's Day at approximately 4am in the morning and which would have been the 1st of January 1987. Well, I, was, I was in Gainsey's house, which is one of the friends that we went first footing at, and, and that was where I saw your mum. And I literally, we were on our way out, and I just heard an Australian voice. So I literally just turned around and got a glimpse of her talking, and I thought, oh, she's okay. Um, I know I said I'd probably prefer to stay there and try and talk to her then, but I didn't, we were all leaving, so... And he said, oh, she's okay to me, mate. And, and we kept walking and disappeared. Never thought I would see her again. We'd gone to a few different people's houses and then Michelle met another one of her friends. So there was about four of us and we decided that he asked us back to his place. And so it was much quieter. It wasn't the rowdy party time. So sitting around having a chat, then your dad came in. I was sitting down closest to her, so we ended up as time went on a little bit, we were the two just chatting to each other and all the rest of them were talking and I thought, oh, she's nice. Um, and we just sort of clicked. You know, we could talk really easily to each other and we seemed to have like similar families in a way, um, that sort of similar values and ideas about life and, and family, which was really important. Uh, we went on a few more dates, different places to, I don't know where, we just, he got in the car and <laughs> went somewhere. And then the last night that I knew that I was getting on a bus to go down the country back to my uncle's and it was snowing and it was freezing and we didn't want to leave each other, but it was hard thinking when we will see each other again. Neither of us wanted to leave. She didn't want to go in. I didn't want to drive home. Um, and after a while, I went, I think I finally found someone I'd like to marry, but um, unfortunately, you live at the other side of the bloody world. Why do you have to do that? Why couldn't you live in France or Spain or somewhere close? So when we were in the car, um, we decided the only way we could keep in contact was to write letters to each other. Um, and we wrote to each other every week for a year. Never missed once. Somewhere between 80 and 100 letters, I think, from the January through to December. Mum used to say, oh, Sharon's pen pal. So I used to go, oh yeah, okay, mum, yeah, whatever. Um, and then I said, well, he's coming to Australia to see me in December. So, oh, he must really like you then. But yeah, that's what that's all. She didn't know what I was going to. I said, is there anywhere really nice around here that you like? So she couldn't think of anywhere really. So she just went to Wester Falls Park, which is a nice park. And um, so we got out. And I got down and told her to close her eyes and I was down on one knee and asked her to marry her. Struggled to get back up because she was strangling her, saying yes. And then we had to go home and tell mum and dad. And because they were sitting there in their pyjamas because it was 11 o'clock at night. But your mum was really excited. Yeah, she was. As you yes. say, your dad didn't say a lot, but your mum yeah. said there was some wonderful news, best that we could hope for. Oh, yes. And, and then mum said... Really you will be coming back here to stay though, won't you? <laughs>